All right. What's up, y'all? Prophet David Taylor here with your weekly live prophetic word. Um, going to get started right at 2.30. I'd like to come on a little bit early because I've noticed if I come on a little bit late, y'all think I'm not coming. So I want to be sure to let you know I'm here on my post. And uh, so got a powerful word today. Super excited about it. Didn't make it back home in time. So that's why I'm doing a car video. But that's all right. Doesn't matter so much where I am. Matters more that I'm saying what the Lord wants me to say. So we're going to give people a few minutes to come on here. And uh, huh. beautiful February day. Hard to believe that it's February, but our weather comes in extremes now. So. You know, it's either like extremely hot or extremely cold or extremely windy or wait, let me check and see if I'm coming. all right. What's up, y'all? Yeah, I'm so, coming through. All right, good. You know, it's either like extremely hot or extremely cold or yeah, good. I'm coming through. Okay, good. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Hope everybody had a good week. Sunday is not the last day of the week. Sunday is the first day of the week. So just throw that out there. So that's why it's always good to start your week off with honoring God. And I mean, you have to talk to the Lord every day, which you do if you have a relationship. If you just have religion, then you think it's about doing some things on Sunday. But a relationship with a person is somebody that you talk to every day. But you definitely want to start your week off by not only honoring the Lord, but hearing from the Lord. Because the Lord will give you something that will set the tone for your day and your week and whatever season that you're in. So that's why it's always good to honor him at the top. All right, we're gonna start in one minute. I wanna make sure everybody gets a chance to come on. Uh, show is a beautiful day out here though. Again, it's just, you know, because just 10 days ago, we had snow drifts that were anywhere from six to, you know, 12 feet high. Kid you not, no exaggeration. So, cause I had to dig through some of that snow and it took me half the night. <laughs> Digging through some of them snow mounds, trying to get my car out, but praise God, the car was liberated eventually. That's another story I have to tell you sometime. All right, 2.30, we're gonna get started. Thank you, Lord, for the stay. Thank you, God, for your mighty prophetic word. God, I come to you surrendering. I must decrease, so you must increase, oh God, because it is not me, it's you. It is your divinely inspired, inspired utterance, oh God. It is your word through your spirit, your revelation, oh God. So I die to myself right now. Have your way in me. Speak through me. Breathe through me, oh God. Forgive me for any sin and let the spirit of God flow through me so that what is said is what you want said and that it might touch those you want touched, that you might be glorified in all things because your kingdom is about glorifying you and that the saints might be edified, that the demons might be terrified and that the unbelievers might be challenged to turn from their false gods, to turn from their own way and to turn to you. I thank you for it and I believe you for it. I'm expecting you to do great things and signs and wonders and miracles shall follow those that believe and receive and act on, obey this prophetic word. In Jesus' name, I pray and declare and decree. Amen and amen. All right. Today's prophetic word is entitled Loose Here. Let me put that on the screen. Entitled Loose Here. Now, those of you that know anything about 
old school black church, sometimes you would hear people cry out and they say, Lou's here. And maybe you know what that meant. Uh, maybe you didn't. Uh, sometimes they're, they're, that's casting out unclean spirits, tell, telling the devil to let people loose, to break any binding or hindering spirits in the atmosphere. What we're going to look at today, however, is one of the most famous stories in the Bible. But as always, we're going to let the Holy Ghost teach us some new things about it. And more than anything else, uh, we're going to ask the Lord to show, we're going to expect the Lord to show us how to apply its principles to our lives right now. Okay? How are we supposed to apply the Bible principles to our lives right now? So we're going to go to John chapter 11, the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, fourth book in the New Testament. So we're going to go to John chapter 11. Now, I am not going to read the whole chapter at once, but instead I'm going to read different verses at a time and then comment on there as my sister. Read, read different verses at a time and release what the Spirit of God has shown me to release, okay? Because it's quite a long chapter, but we're just going to kind of take it in sections. And again, our prophetic word is loose here. And we're going to see, according to the famous Lazarus story, what the Holy Ghost is saying to us today on the last day of February in 2021. All right? So we're going to start with John chapter 11. I'm reading out of the King James Version. John chapter 11, verse 1. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore, his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now, wait. Let's just stop right there. That's a lot. That's a lot to unpack. So uh, let's check out some of what that's saying. Verse 1, now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus. Sometimes the Bible names the people, sometimes it doesn't. Here, Lazarus' name is significant because he had a personal relationship to Jesus, and so did his whole family. A certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and his sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, his brother Lazarus is sick. So if you're not familiar with that story, the Lord had come into a house one time, and this particular woman, this Mary, was uh, crying, and she was washing Jesus' feet with her tears and then uh, wiped them with her hair and then uh, anointed the Lord with ointment unto his burial, unto expensive perfume. So sometimes the Bible, because uh, there's a, uh, sometimes it looks like there's two different incidents, but the Bible saying that this was the Mary that broke open the special perfume. And this was the Mary that, uh, that uh, anointed the oil unto his death, uh, anointed the Lord unto his death with burial ointment. It was part of their burial ritual. So the Bible is saying that to show you who she is, but also that they had a close relationship with Jesus. Okay, Mary and Martha and Lazarus weren't just casual people. They weren't like the woman with this your blood. They weren't like the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. They weren't like other people who didn't know the Lord at all. They were friends because the Lord, when the Lord would come into Bethany, to uh, stay in Bethany, he would stay with them. So he would stay over their house and everything. So again, these were not just people who had like a distant relationship with Jesus. These people were actually friends with him. So I said, therefore his sister sent unto him saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Okay, and we'll talk about that love in a minute in the next verse. But what I want to focus on in verse three, it says, he whom thou lovest, is sick now and then we'll talk about jesus response now one of the things we struggle with in life sometimes as christians is some of the stuff we have to go through because god does protect us from a lot god protects us as 
old saying goes from dangerous seen and unseen. But sometimes there are some things we go through. And I'm going to talk about Jesus' response in the next verse. But I want to say that don't let the devil make you feel like God doesn't love you just because you're going through something. That's a very common trick of the enemy to try to make us feel like uh, to get in our ear and get in our head, to try to make us to begin to believe, to doubt God's love just because you're going through something. Even uh, a, a deep trial or an intense trial or a terrible trial, if you're going through something like that, it does not mean that God doesn't love you, okay? So don't let the devil get that in your head and make you believe that. But let's look at the Lord's response. This is very interesting. Uh, John eleven four. 4, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now, how did the Lord know that? Okay. Well, the reason the Lord know that is number one, because the Lord knew everything that was going to happen to him before it happened. Number two, because the Lord talked to Father Father God early in the morning every day and spent hours and hours in his presence. And Father God would tell Jesus everything that was going to unfold in the day. So the fact that Lazarus is sick, the Lord already knew that the sickness wasn't the end of him. Now, what I want to throw out there is understand that that also means that there is some sickness unto death. Sometimes people get sick and that's the end of them. Sometimes it's going to take them out. Sometimes, you know, not that the Lord can't heal them, not that the Lord doesn't want to heal them, but there are some times when that's the end for that person. Because I've been in a situation where someone has come and told me that a certain person was sick and I asked the Lord, were they going to recover? And the Lord said, no, this was it. So I needed to go see them because I've been in that situation more than one time because this was it for them. So the Lord was saying, why would the Lord say, this is not a sickness unto death if it wasn't a possibility of that happening. So like I said a few moments ago, don't get fooled by the devil if you have to go through stuff, but also understand that some stuff for that person is the end of their journey. Okay? So, but the Lord said here, that's not what's happening here with Lazarus. And that's why, and hear me well on this one, especially for prophetic people. That's why you have to ask the Lord in each individual case, what's going on. If there's anything I've learned in the last five years in terms of walking through the prophetic, is that especially when you're dealing with stuff like funerals, especially when you're dealing with stuff like end of life stuff, especially when you're dealing with stuff where things could go either way, the proper response when you're in a situation like this is to get a word from Jesus ask the Lord what's going on. Like, for example, if uh, if you've been dealing with something chronic, that might be a demon. You might need, a, no, it might need a demon cast out. You might have been suffering for decades because you thought your sickness was only something natural because you never got a word from the Lord about what's going on here. Um, someone may be reaping what they've sown, okay? Be not deceived, God is not mocked for whatsoever a man or a woman, a person sows, that shall they also reap. So sometimes people are reaping exactly what they've sown. Okay? Sometimes people are dealing with a satanic attack and they don't have enough faith. I've been in a situation where I've seen uh, a family where there was kind of like a bloodline curse and every Every uh, person that had been in that position had gotten cancer and then uh, some other people got cancer. And I tried to tell them this was a bloodline curse. This is not from God. This is some, this is from the devil. And this is something that can be broken. And they didn't want to hear it. They didn't believe that. OK. And so people ended up dying in situations like that. Then people didn't have to die. OK, but they didn't have enough faith to believe that God can heal them. So what's my point? My point is based on what they said to Jesus and how he responded to them. The smartest thing you could ever do, especially the ministers that are trying to minister to people, is don't go in 
trying to uh, uh, use your own human judgment to figure out what's going on, ask the Lord. Ask the Lord, is this a sickness unto death? Ask the Lord, is this demonic oppression? Is this uh, something that needs to be cast out? Ask the Lord, is this the devil blessing somebody and they don't have enough faith to fight back? Because you can add your faith to theirs. Did you know that? You can go in a situation, if you have more faith than the person you're dealing with, you can add your faith to theirs to help them fight. But you must get a word from the Lord to discern what's going on in the situation. That's so important because how many times have you been in a situation or you've seen ministers say something totally off or totally insensitive because they're trying to make sense of a senseless situation. Sometimes we're just talking off the cuff instead of getting a word from the Lord to discern what's going on. So I can't stress that enough. Can't stress that enough. So that's what the Lord did here in this situation with Lazarus. Again, verse four, when Jesus heard, heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So the Lord knew what was going to happen. The Lord knew that no matter what was going, going on with Lazarus, this wasn't the end of him. Okay? So you got to get a word from the Lord to discern your situation. You can't assume that you know what's going on. Okay? All right. Verse 5. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, saith he to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. That's verses five, six, and seven. Now, right there, right there, what we need to talk about there is sometimes the Lord don't move <laughs> when you want him to move. <laughs> and we'll see later on that sometimes the Lord don't move the way you want him to move. So what are you supposed to do in situations like that? In situations like that, you have to trust him. You have to trust him because the Lord already spoke the word that he was going to be glorified in the situation. I'm going to talk about that later when we get to what happens, about what glorifies God and what doesn't. But the Lord already spoke the word that he was going to be glorified in the situation with Lazarus. So just because Jesus stayed where he was two more days doesn't mean he wasn't in control or he didn't know what was going on. And just because God doesn't always move when you want him to move, and just because God doesn't always move the way you want him to move, doesn't mean he hasn't heard your prayer. And it doesn't mean that he's not going to speak in the, and answer the situation. But it might not be the way you thought, and it might not be when you thought. That's very, very important. Because that's how sometimes we get confused in our walk with Christ. You can get so used to the Lord doing things a certain way, or you can get so used to a routine, or you can get so used to patterns, and then all of a sudden something happens, and God responds differently. Or God doesn't say anything for a while, or God says something you didn't expect him to say. Okay? So when we're in situations like that, what you have to learn how to do is you have to learn how to trust the Lord, even if it doesn't look like what you thought it was going to look like, even if he doesn't move when you thought he should have. Okay. All right. We're going to skip a few verses. All right. We're going to drop down to verse 14. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. So in the time that the Lord had hesitated and not gone straight to him, they sent word to Jesus, and the Bible says he stayed there two days in the place that he was before he moved. And while he was still there, Lazarus died. The Lord said, then said Jesus unto them plainly, verse 14, John eleven fourteen, 14, Lazarus is dead. Then the Lord says this in verse 15, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Now, wait just a minute. The Lord said something very profound there. The Lord said, I'm glad for your sake I wasn't there. I'm glad, says Jesus, for your sake that I wasn't there to the intent ye may believe. Now, what did the Lord just tell you? The Lord just told you that sometimes he does things a certain way to strengthen 
your faith. Because when Jesus does get there, we're going to see that a few, in a few minutes. They say certain things to him about what would have happened if he had been there sooner. So in other words, they believe Jesus enough to believe that he could stop the sickness. But Lazarus was dead now. And the Lord said to his 12 that followed him, to his disciples, I'm glad I wasn't there. It's the intent that you may believe. So in other words, hear me well. What if God is trying to lift you to a new level of faith? Maybe that's why he let the situation get as bad as it got. Did you ever think about that? Because it is going to happen at some point in your life. If you're in a situation right now and you're struggling and it looks really bad and you've been praying and praying and praying and working and working and doing everything you know how to do. And it looked like the Lord just let the situation get even worse. What did Jesus just say? He said that he was glad he wasn't there for their sakes to the intent that they may believe. So in other words, the Lord knew that they had enough faith to believe that he could heal the sick. But did they have enough faith to believe he could raise a man from the dead? See that? Let me say that one more time. The Lord knew that they had enough faith to believe that he could heal the sick. But did they have enough faith to believe that he could raise the dead? I'm going to throw that question out to you, those of you that are watching this broadcast. Do you have faith that God can do things at a certain level on a scale of, let's say, 1 to 20? Let's say your faith is at a level 4, and everything that you've experienced with God has been on a level 4. Do you believe God has enough power to do something that's on a level six level of faith. Maybe you've only ever seen God do things on a level four because you only believe him at that level. What if God allows you to be in a situation where that situation is above the level of faith that you have now? What if God allows you to be in a situation that where you're in over your head, where you're in deeper than you've ever been before? Do you believe, because believing that the Lord has enough power to heal a sick man is a different level of faith than believing that the Lord has enough power to raise a dead man. Say that one more time. Believing that Christ has enough power to heal a sick man is a certain level of faith. Believing that Christ has enough power to raise a dead man. Do you believe God on that level? And are you willing to follow the Lord even if he's leading you into something that's stretching your faith? stretching your faith. In other words, you've been operating on a certain level of faith and you've mastered some of the lessons on that level and you know how to operate on that level of faith. And all of a sudden, life puts you in a situation where you need more faith than you have on that level. Would you still follow the Lord? Because sometimes we get angry. Sometimes we fight, rebel. Sometimes we get mad at God. Sometimes we start to doubt. Sometimes we do like Peter and we start cursing. Sometimes we do like Job when we sit down and start feeling sorry for ourselves and start talking about all the reasons how this ain't fair and this shouldn't be happening to me. Those are all very common res responses. But what if the Lord tells you to follow him into a situation that's deeper than you've ever been before? Because the Lord said to his friends, I'm glad I wasn't there for your sake. And the Lord asked his 12 to follow him, in, follow him into a situation where they all believe the Lord had enough power to heal sick people, but he, did he have enough power to bring a man back that's been dead? Okay. Do you have enough faith in Christ to believe that Christ can resurrect your dead situation? Now we're going to look at verse 17. Then when Jesus came, came to Bethany, which is the town that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus lived in, then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. So by the time the Lord got there, Lazarus had already been in the grave four days. So that looks like to me, that's like a total of six days. Like Lazarus was still alive when they came and got Jesus and he waited there two more days. Or maybe Lazarus died right after, I'm not sure. But by the time Jesus showed up, he waited two days after he first got the news, and then Lazarus was in the ground four days. So that looks like about six days, so that's, you know, one day short of a week. 
So I know Mary and Martha had to be losing their minds because they called for the Lord and they knew the Lord had the power to heal him, but the Lord didn't show up till after he was dead. And the Lord showed up after he was dead and in the grave. And the Lord showed up after he was dead and in the grave four days. So the Lord got the news at one point, waited two days. And by the time he got there, Lazarus had been in the grave four days already. What would you do? <laughs> what would you do if the Lord just like looked like he was taking his time? Looked like he was taking his time. Like you done cried out and cried out and cried out. Looked like the Lord just kind of taking his time. And the situation has gotten so bad, it's dead and buried. Do you still believe God has enough resurrection power to impact that situation? And now Bethany was nigh unto Jerusalem. I'm in verse 18, John eleven eighteen. 18. Now Bethany was nigh, that means near, unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Because, you know, people are going to come over your house and go come around the family if a loved one has died. You know, not as much during the pandemic, obviously, because we can't gather in large numbers. But under normal non-pandemic situations, people are going to come and mourn with you. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So Martha there was showing her level of faith, showing that she believed in the resurrection, but she thought it was out there somewhere in the future. She thought she did express her faith by saying, I know that whatever God, you ask God, God will give it to you. But she said, if you had been here, you could have stopped him from dying, which was true. If the Lord had been there, he could have stopped Lazarus from dying, but he didn't show up till after Lazarus was dead and in the grave four days already. And then Jesus said, that brother shall rise again. And Martha was like, yeah, I know he's going to rise again at the last day. She thought the power of God was out there somewhere in the future. Then the Lord said this, one of his most famous statements, John eleven twenty five. 25. Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. So she didn't really directly answer his question. Have you ever been in a situation where the Lord asks you a question and you kind of hem and haw? <laughs> You kind of you kind of skirt around the issue like, you know, you know, yeah, God, I believe you at a certain level. You know, I'm still kind of at that four. Maybe I can squeeze out like a four and a half, four point five level of faith. But, you know, all this, what you're talking about, I'm not not quite sure. So you give kind of that generic churchy smile on your face answer. And that ain't what the Lord said. What the Lord said. The brother shall rise again. The Lord said, I'm the resurrection. Because Martha said he's going to rise again at the last day. She talked about the future. The Lord said, I'm the resurrection, the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? What did the Lord just tell you? The Lord just told you that eternal life is found in him. I know many times people don't talk about eternal life or they talk about it in the abstract. Because you think it's something that's out there somewhere someday in your future. But it's not. it's right now. Is right now, if you, if your spirit steps out of your body and you are a Christian, you go to be with the Lord. You don't die. It's just your body goes back to the dust. You, your spirit and your soul goes to be in the presence of God and you're going to abide with him forever. You're never going to die. And if you have loved ones that have passed on, if they died in Christ, we're going to see them again. That's the hope of being a Christian. No, nobody else can offer you that kind of hope. That's the hope of being a Christian. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> the Lord is not talking about somewhere out there someday. He's talking about himself. That means if you got Jesus, you got the resurrection. If you got Jesus, you got life. You got Jesus that if you believe in him, even though if you're dead, 
that's not just talking about physical death. Well, in this case, it is, but it's not, it doesn't just mean physical death. It means if your reputation is dead, if your mind is dead, if your finances are dead, if your marriage is dead, if your career is dead, the Lord can bring it back. It's not somewhere out there someday going by and by to some pie in the sky when you die. That's not it. It's right now if you have Jesus. You have the resurrection. He is the resurrection, and he's able to resurrect whatever in your life that has died. But the question the Lord asks you is, do you believe that? That's what makes the difference. Do you believe that? Do you believe he can resurrect anything in your life that's dead? Do you really believe it? All right. Okay. All right, let's look at verse 28. And when she had so said, Martha, she went away and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, the master has come and calls for thee. As soon as she, Mary, heard that, she rose quickly and came unto him. Now, Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. So they met him outside of town. So he wasn't even in Bethany yet. He was on the outskirts of Bethany. And Mary had met the Lord before he even hit the city. Uh, excuse me, Martha had met the Lord before he even hit the city. And then Mary ran to that same place. Then uh, Jews then, which were the Jews then, which were in with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, she goeth unto the grave to weep there. So then people got up and followed Mary after she ran out to meet the Lord. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet and sang unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Now that's the second time. The second time both them women said the same thing. They doubled that thing. And that's how you know where their faith was. Both of them said, if you've been here, because they had seen the Lord heal so many sick people. That's what the Lord was known for, was healing sick people. They seen the Lord heal so many sick people. And they said, if you had been here, Lazarus would never die. But the Lord challenged them on a higher level. The Lord was like, do you believe I can bring him back? Okay. Do you believe God can bring your situation back? Um, verse 33, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept then said the Jews, behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died. Now there it is. It's very easy to let doubt creep in when you're in a tough situation, when something is dead. It's very easy to begin to doubt God and say, well, God did this for this person. And God did that for that person. How come he didn't do that for me? Because he had something special he was going to do in this situation. That's why I told you each situation is unique. You have to get a word from the Lord for each individual situation. Okay. Verse 38, John eleven thirty-eight. 38. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Now, that seems to be very common in Jesus' time because they laid the Lord in a tomb and they rolled a stone in front of the tomb. So, Lazarus, so stop thinking about it like uh, cemeteries like we have where we put the body six feet under. Uh, it's a cave. It's a cave and a stone lay upon it. A stone lays upon the entrance. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that, if thou wouldest believe that thou shouldest see the glory of God. Now, right there, don't miss what happened. The Lord is going to tell you to do something as an act of faith. One more time, don't miss that. If you're looking for a resurrection miracle from Christ, if you're looking for the Lord to bring back something that was dead, the Lord is going to ask you to do something as an act of faith. And what the Lord asked them to do was roll away the stone. What if they had said no? <laughs> Lazarus still being that great. The Lord would be like, I told you, roll the stone away. Okay? And some of y'all feel like you've been stuck in a certain space in a certain place 
Well, that's because you haven't done what the Lord told you to do. That's why I said it now several times in this broadcast. You have to get a specific word from the Lord when you're in a situation. Do not assume. Do not assume you know what the will of God is. Ask him every time. Ask him and let him give you a word. So because when you want a resurrection miracle, when you want power from God to manifest, God's going to ask you to do something. I know we don't like it. I know we don't think it should be that way. I know we want him to be our personal genie where we just pop our fingers and the Lord does stuff. But you're going to have to do something. You're going to have to do something as an act of faith that you really believe that God is both willing and able to do what you've asked him to do. So in this situation, the Lord told them to roll away the stone. And Martha's response was, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said, Lord, by this time he stinks, for he's been dead four days. So in other words, the Lord was stretching their faith. Both Mary and Martha said, if you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. But the Lord said, I'm here now. <laughs> But they were like, but he dead four days now. He's dead. His body started to decompose. Okay. Body started to rot because, you know, rigor mortis and a whole bunch of other things set in once death has occurred because your body starts to rot. Your organ shut down. Your brain shut down. It's like you've been in the grave four days now, Lord. And the Lord said, roll the stone away. And the Lord said, did not tell you if you believe you see the glory of God. Then what happened? Verse 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And then the Lord prayed and did the miracle. What does that tell you? That tells you that you're going to have to obey what the Lord told you to do to get the resurrection power flowing. I know you just want to sit back and not do anything and just talk to the Lord like he's your genie and, you know, just do whatever. But you're going to have to get your faith involved and you're going to have to do what the Lord told you to do. I know why I'm doing that kind of stuff right now. And then after they rolled the stone away, then the Lord, verse 41, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. So there's the Lord is, is echoing kind of like a bookmark, what he said earlier, that he wanted people to believe. He knew that this was an opportunity, a teaching moment, if you will, to increase the faith of everybody that saw it happen. Because remember, remember, we're talking about Mary and Martha and a bunch of mourners, a bunch of people from the town that knew Mary and Martha and Jesus and came to comfort Mary and Martha because their brother was dead. So it wasn't just Mary and Martha in this scenario. It was Mary and Mar Martha and a bunch of town folks. And the Lord's response to that was to say, uh, I thank you that you've heard me, Father, and I know that you always hear me. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And that's the Lord focusing on the point he mentioned before, that he wants us to believe. He wanted them to believe and he wants us to believe. Verse 43, and when he, when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto him, loose him and let him go. That's probably one of the most famous scriptures in the Bible. Loose him and let it go. And when the Lord had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice. Now, what I want to do is I want to recount, recap the anatomy of the miracle. Mary and Martha had a situation that turned into a crisis. They had a situation that the brother was sick, but God didn't move then. Then it turned into a crisis because then Lazarus died. And then Lazarus, by the time Jesus showed up, by the time he did answer, Lazarus was dead four days. And the Lord challenged them in the midst of a crisis to believe, to see him in a new way and to believe on him at a new level. And that's the same thing God does for us when we're in a crisis situation. Because I know you've been in situations where it was still kind of a challenge. It was still kind of a situation you call on God and God answers. So you got used to that. But now you've gotten in a situation where you call on God and it was 
a challenge. It was a situation that turned into a crisis. Because the Lord is challenging, challenging you to see him in a new way. And the Lord is challenging you to believe on him in a new way. The, God is asking you, do you believe that I'm God even over a crisis? I know you believe I'm God over a challenge. I know you believe I'm God over a situation, but do you think I'm God over a crisis? And he gonna show up when he shows up. May not be when you want him to show up, but he gonna show up when he shows up. And when he does, he's still gonna challenge your faith. Okay, he's still gonna say, do you believe I'm able to do this? And then you're gonna have to do something to demonstrate that you have faith. In this case, it was them rolling away the stone because the Lord didn't lift up his eyes to pray and speak the resurrection words until them people roll the stone away. Did you notice that? So the Lord is gonna challenge you to do something as an act of faith to get the resurrection power going. Then when he prayed to Father God, he prayed with confidence. He said, I know you always hear me, but because of the people which stand by, said it that they may believe. So in other words, when you get your miracle, it's not just going to be to increase your faith. It's going to be to increase the faith of the people that are around you. Okay? To increase the faith of the people that are around you. So in other words, when people see your miracle, when people see your life, it's so their faith can get increased. So the Lord was taken into account more than Mary and Martha. That's the thing. And that's the thing that we sometimes forget, that when God is working in your life, it's not just about you. There are going to be some other people around you that when they see what God has done for you, their faith is going to be increased. Okay? But I want to get to those famous words. Start back again in verse 43. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice. So in other words, he didn't say Lazarus come forth. He said, Lazarus, come forth. He said with a loud voice. He cried with a loud voice. He wasn't trying to be quiet about it. So in other words, when the Lord opens his mouth to shout, everything going to hear him. And he that was dead came forth. Did you see that there was no hesitation? And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto him, loose him and let him go. What does that mean? That means that there might be some, some strings, some napkins, some grave clothes, some stuff that's on your miracle. And then you got to loose it and let it go. And that's what I've been trying to get to. The prophetic, prophetic word for the day is to loose here. You know what that means? That means that when the Lord brings your situation back from the grave, might be some stuff that you've got to loose off of it to get it cleaned up and get it the way you want it. Also might be some stuff that you have to let go of. You might have to loose yourself. You might have to loose yourself. You might have to loose yourself from some certain things. And many times that's where people get confused because you know what people expect? I'll tell you what people expect. People expect a ready-made miracle. But if you know anything about birth, because remember this was something coming out of a grave, but if you know anything about birth, if you're a parent, if you're a woman and you ever pushed a baby out of your womb, or if you're a father and you were ever in the delivery room, or you've ever seen a child being born, it's a messy affair. Ain't nothing clean about childbirth. <laughs> Ain't nothing clean about childbirth. The woman goes into labor and the woman's in labor for, for however many hours because that cervix has to dilate and that womb has to open to clear the canal to give there enough room because if she try to push the baby out before she's dilated, she'll kill herself. She will little that baby will split the mama from stem to stern. And then she got to push the baby out and the baby's head come out and blood come out and the baby's purple. Sometimes the baby's shoulders pop out. Sometimes the baby is breached. Sometimes they have to turn the baby. Then the placenta come out. You got to cut the cord. And what do they have to do? They have to clean the baby off. In this situation, Lazarus is coming up out of a grave and he was still bound hand and foot and he had a napkin on the face and the Lord said, loose him and let him go. So when God gives you a resurrection miracle, you got to expect that there's still going to be some things you got to loose off of it and some things that you might have to loose off of yourself. What do I mean by that? Some people have been praying for a relationship 
But what you think is going to happen is that you're going to get a ready-made relationship. But there might be some things you've got to loose off of that thing. So you can have the relationship you want. Might be some things that you have to loose off of yourself. Might be some chains on the brain. Do you know that the strongest chains are the chains on the brain? Might be some chains on the brain that you've got to loose off of yourself to get the resurrection miracle. Because you might have to clean it up. It might come hopping out the grave, but it still might be bound hand and foot and have a face napkin. What if it don't look like what you thought? You might have to clean it up. You might have to lose some of it. Okay. And you can't be afraid of that. And I want you to notice that the Lord didn't do that. He told them to do that. He said, loose him. You notice that the Lord didn't roll the stone away and the Lord didn't lose Lazarus from the grave clothes or from his hand and feet being bound. Did you notice that? Did you notice that God didn't do that? He told them to do that. So once again, you're going to have to participate in your own miracle with an act of faith, but also to get the grave clothes off. And that's so very important. Remember, I did a prophetic word a couple weeks back, a couple months back, called Let the Old Man Go. That's on my Facebook page if you want to watch that again. It's called Let the Old Man Go. Sometimes that's what you have to do to get your resurrection miracle. Sometimes them grave clothes are on you. Sometimes that binding of the hand and the feet is on you. And what God is trying to do is to get you to loose yourself from that. So that when that thing you thought was dead, that you didn't know God could bring back from a grave, comes hopping out of that grave at you. You are ready to loose it and let it go so that you can have it in the fullness. Now, there's one more thing I want to look at because I want you to imagine what it looked like. That man hopping out that grave. I just want you to imagine you didn't watch somebody die. You didn't bury them. They've been in the ground, they've been in the cave, they've been in the grave four days. And then you see, if we saw something like that, we might think it was walking dead. <laughs> then you see him come hopping out that grave. Your brother's back. He was gone, he back. What did that do to them psychologically? See, because when God does stuff like that, your mind's gonna get blown. When you see what God can do and will do in your life, your mind's gonna get blown. But here, this last little bit I want to look at, then I'll be through. Verse 45, then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. And there the Lord got what he wanted. It wasn't just Mary and Martha's faith he wanted to increase. The, the people that were around them, he increased their faith too. It won't just be you that profits from your miracle, it'll be the people around you. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Verse 47, then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, what do we, or in other words, what, what shall we do? What are we going to do about this? For this man doeth many miracles. Now, the reason I want to end with that, the reason I want to get that in is to help you understand is some folks going to talk about your miracle. So when you get your, your miracle and you have to loose here, you got to loose it, you got to loose yourself, and you get something that was dead and stinking and buried, and it comes back, I stopped by to tell you, some folks going to believe on God from that, but some folks going to go run their mouth to your enemies. Some folks are going to go straight to the people that hate you the most and say, did you hear that that Jesus, that rabbi that we know y'all don't like, did you hear that he raised Lazarus of Bethany from the dead? Lazarus had died and the Lord wasn't there. He came, Lazarus had been in that cave for four days. And it was Mary and Martha and, and Tamika and Shaniqua and Rashidi and them. And it was all standing around. And the Lord said, Lazarus, come forth. And that man came hopping out the grave. And the Lord's enemy said, what we going to do about this? <laughs> what shall we do? Because this man does many miracles. Jesus was a threat to them because he undermined their power. So in other words, all the power and control and all the things that they had over the people and all the things that they wanted from the people, the Lord was undermining that because the Lord was walking in resurrection power. He's walking in miracle power. And a lot of people were believing on Jesus instead of uh, the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they didn't like that because somebody is going to go run name mouth to the people that hate you the most. 
one more time. Somebody's going to run their mouth to the people that hate you the most. You cannot be intimidated by that, and you cannot worry about that. Take your miracle and go on about your business. <laughs> Enjoy the fact that Lazarus is back because it says later on, there are a lot of people that came to their house, not just to see Jesus, but to see Lazarus whom Jesus had raised from the dead. It says that later on, that after that happened, there were people that came by to see Mary and Martha when Jesus was in town, but not just to see Jesus, but also to see Lazarus. That means it will be some people that come by just to see your miracle. Did you know that? Whatever your miracle is and whatever it looks like, going to be some people that come by to see it. Okay? There's going to be some people that go and do that to the people that hate you the most. Don't even worry about that. Don't even let that slow you down. Okay? But don't be surprised by it either. All right? All right. Let me see if the Holy Ghost has anything else I need to release. For behold, there's a day coming, says the Lord, and now is, where I do miracles and I do resurrections, and I resurrect dead things and I bring them back to life. Believe me on this level. Believe that I am able and believe that I'm willing to do it for you, for I am no respect of person. And just like I raised Lazarus from the dead and I gave Mary and Martha, their brother, back, I can raise your Lazarus, whatever your Lazarus is, I can raise it from the dead and bring it back to you. And you need to be prepared to roll the stone away, do what I tell you to do, to prepare yourself, to position yourself for a miracle. And you need to be prepared to take the grave clothes off, to unbind it so we can be free once I put it in your hand. Says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Wow. Okay. I'm excited. I don't know if you're excited, but I'm excited. Because that means just what the Holy Ghost said. It means that the Lord is going to move with resurrection and miracle power. But we got to be ready to do our part. We got to be ready to roll that stone away. We got to be ready to believe him on another level and then have an act of faith. And we got to loose it and loose ourselves so we can enjoy it in the fullness. And we got to be sure we're not going to be worrying about the folks that talked about <laughs> your miracle. Because they will, and they're going to run and tell the folks that hate you the most, but that's all right. Go on about your business, all right? Okay, do I have any prayer requests? If there are any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. Hope y'all can see me and hear me through this whole thing. I hope I wasn't breaking up this time. I, I, I think it came through all the way. I hope I wasn't breaking up, but um, so I hope you heard me all the way through. So if you got any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. So I can pray before we leave. No prayer requests? Okay, I don't think I've seen any prayer requests. All right. Well, uh, then that's it for this weekly live prophetic word. Thanks to all of you that watch me live. Thanks to you that are watching the, re the replay. Remember I told you that uh, every week I'm going to ask you to do one thing because my goal this year is to increase my reach. And so what I'm going to ask you to do this week is share this video in as many places as you can. Okay, my sister said it was clear. Good. Share this video in as many places as you can so that other people's faith can be edified so they can understand there's a resurrection miracle power coming into their lives. Okay? But you got to watch this video from the top so you, you can get all the principles. So please share this video as many places as you can because I know there's some other people out there that need some resurrection power. I know there's some other people out there that need to hear these principles from God. So please share this video as many places as you can. All right. Okay. We're tomorrow's March. We made it through the first two. Well, you know, almost through the end of this day, first two months of 2021. So praise God for that. So tomorrow's March. That's the last month of the first quarter. And so I will be back next week, regular time. Well, I'll be the first Sunday of March, 2.30 PM Central Standard Time for our next weekly live prophetic word. All right. Amen. God bless. And I will see you same time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time next week. Oh, if you want to bless me financially, if you want to give me a gift, let me give you my Zelle. Like I told you last week, it was going around on Twitter that Cash App is stealing money or holding money from people, allegedly. Not accusing them of anything. Allegedly.
That's what was being said. So just to let you know, I use Zelle because Zelle is a um, is an app. It's a cleaner app. Everything just goes straight through to your account, and they don't take out any fees because uh, Zelle runs through your bank. So uh, my sister says she was share Marshall rolling in. Amen. Amen. Okay, so if you want to bless me, uh, give me a gift because it goes into helping me do more ministry. Uh, there's my Zell. So thank you so much for those of you that watch me live, and thank you so much for those of you that are watching the uh, broadcast on replay. I'll see you same time next week, uh, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for the next weekly live prophetic word. Remember, it's time to loose here. Amen, and God bless.